So meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with chapter 107 of the acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law MGL 30A 20 until March 31st, 2023. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Um, Tim and I will convene the um, select board meeting. All right. As well. And I will convene the CCI meeting and, oh boy, we're missing a lot of people. Okay, I'm going to start taking attendance. We have Jim, Jim Cambius, not here yet. Julie, you're here. Lily, here. Tim. Here. Kate Lawless is not coming tonight. Andrea is here. I'm here. Trevor, I hear, is not coming tonight. Yeah, he's taking care of his dad tonight. Okay. Here comes MA, by the way. Oh, good. All right. Let's see. Darius is not here. Carolyn is here. Okay. MA, hi, is here. Here. Alan, Alan's here too. I'm partially oh, here. Oh, good. Okay. John is here. Natalie is here. And Satu is not here. So we're missing Satu and Jim Cambius right now. Okay. And that is our guest, Greg French, and... here twice. One is connecting to audio. Oh, here's Jim. Okay. Here comes Jim. Oh, Jim's here. Yay. Hi, Jim. Hi. How are you feeling, Lily? Kind of like uh, something that I probably don't want to have committed to <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> Thank you for ask, asking. <laughs> oh, really? Actually, really, you don't look really that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I have this beautiful lamp that is made with maple, a ma maple inner inner wood of the maple tree and it nice rosy red and it does does <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I I I myself <laughs> I it in my whole house okay all right so I'm going to continue meeting guidelines please speak one at a time follow dearful code of conduct be respectful considerate courteous concise non-repetitive and please be recognized by the chair that would be me <laughs> okay all right okay um, chair, do you recognize me <laughs> Sorry. there's no there's no there's no corner here or i would put you in the corner too <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. All right. Um, so we've got two sets of minutes to approve since I forgot to ask last time. So we have the minutes from October 13th. Does anybody have any additions, corrections? Do I hear a motion? Carolyn makes that motion. I, I have an okay. I have a correction. You do. Oh, good. Uh, my my lovely husband Alan was a guest. On October 13th? Oh, maybe that's the meeting that's after. Wrong one. Yeah. Uh, wrong yeah. one. Never mind. I withdraw my correction. <laughs> correction withdrawn. <laughs> okay. Do I hear a second? Second. Carolyn? Tim, yes. And no objections. All right. So the minutes, minutes are approved. And, and, and for, minutes for MA's comfort level, I will assure you that Alan's attendance. On November 9th was I don't want to I don't want to be any part of this. <laughs> Come on. Alan, well, I'm gonna put you in the corner with Tim pretty soon. <laughs> Thank you. Um, did you ask about the November 9th minutes yet? Yeah, I was just about to. Okay, yes, the November 9th. I will make a motion to approve. Here I'll second. Okay. Any questions? All, all in favor? Okay. All right. So both minutes are approved. Okay. All right. So we're going to go on to committee updates and reports. So I'm going to start at the top with Jim. I always get put on the spot first. Um, 
Well, I can put the, you last. The library yeah. trustees are meeting tomorrow. So we have not had a meeting since uh, the last uh, CCI meeting, I don't think. Um, they did have a meeting to discuss um, uh, uh, politicking uh, <laughs> that I was unable to attend uh, yesterday. Um, but basically, we're doing phone banking. And uh, um, I believe the political consultant they hired was also doing texts uh, with some mixed results. Um, but that's been the, you know, main focus of the library group. I do not know if, um, um, Mr. Phelps has gotten any more large donors on board, but we're all hoping. Lily? So today is Giving Tuesday. Does the library have an effort around that? Um... I think we've just been doing sort of a general fundraising push. We did our, you know, we've been doing our annual appeal anyway. In fact, was it last week or week before we were all, you know, stuffing envelopes for that, mailing out to the to the existing mailing list of donors. You probably have all gotten them by now. Um, and, um, um, you know, um, that's, but that would be true in any year. <laughs> <clears throat> Emily? Yes, just a reminder that if anyone would like a uh, please vote to support the library, spawn sign that I believe Tim Hilchey and I and a number of other people both have them, all have them. So try to, if you're in favor of the library, please uh, ask for as many signs as you can distribute. All right. Thanks, Emily. Andrea? I have a question about whether or not um, DA has been approached for a sizable donation given their recent largesse. <laughs> um, I'm not privy to that, I'm afraid. You know, that's, that's being handled by some, by we have a professional fundraiser and I have not heard of any large donations from Deerfield Academy. Um, I don't know that they're playing any major role in this. When um, there was a town gown gathering and Denise and I spoke to the headmaster who had no idea what was going on with the library. I will pass that along. <clears throat> he said, what, what's the problem? And we just paused and said, money. <laughs> <laughs> I will pass, thank you, I will pass that along. I asked him if he knew what was going on in the town, and then Andrea and I proceeded to let him know what was going on <laughs> in the town. And he just seemed totally engaged. Not really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little sarcasm there. Julie. Yeah, Jim, I just have a comment. I mean, so the professional fundraiser, I would sort of certainly hope that that would filter down to the trustees so that you could then in turn report to CCI. Yes, but the trouble is, as I said, our, our monthly meeting is um, yeah. next week, I think. Yeah, I, oh, yeah, I know. I sorry, sorry, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I mean, you know, we're sort of getting down to, you know, like. Right. Our next meeting is, next week. is, is December 7. Um, <laughs> okay, that's the day after the vote. Okay. All right. Julie's hands up. Oh, I'm sorry, Julie. Is there any news on the request for funding from the state for the 12 libraries? No new developments that I'm aware of. I think that would have been announced. I think I think I would have been informed if that had. Well, even if it hasn't come through, but if there's, is there any legislation written? Is there any progress or anything? So, Tim, I believe you were uh, in the loop on this as well. That there has been some legislative language, but I don't know if any votes have been taken have been taken on that. Um, well, John. You put your hand up you as if you might have something to say. So right, I'll go ahead, after you. Tim. Well, I was just going to speak about Deerfield Academy. It would have been the previous oh. administration that committed to a sizable donation to Deerfield uh, to the Tilton Library. So we would want to follow up with the previous administration to see what they committed to and make sure that holds true to the current administration. So I know Keith Finan was approached and uh, what was committed to. I was 
usually I'm in the midst of a lot of conversations with DA. I was not in the middle of that one. Okay. So from what I currently know about where the requests for fund from the state or ARPA is, is that they did their supplemental budget. They used about uh, a portion of the two point whatever billion dollars of ARPA funds that were there. There are 1.75 billion left. This will go into the new session um, there. So we haven't had, I haven't had any conversations with Joe or Natalie since the election about where that stands. Um, I'm in the process of pulling together a letter for the select board to review, uh, directed at Governor-elect Healy and Lieutenant Governor-elect Driscoll. And uh, so that's all I can say at the moment. Um, as, as Jim said, there was legislation written or drafts of legislation, but I don't think it, it got included in the supplemental budget. And, uh, and I think um, John sent us uh, a link to what had been awarded out in Western Massachusetts and there wasn't a lot. Right, okay, Carolyn? Um, I just wanna follow up with Tim. The, the draft legislation is for the informal session in January. So there would be no action on it until January because the, the economic right. bill that went through that used the ARPA funding was the libraries were not included. But that was because we were told that the that would be separate legislation. Um, the last I heard, it was um, what was it, four hundred and something thousand for us in the library, Tim? It was very I don't know. It was four hundred and thirty thousand. I don't know. That was just early on in the process, and it was one of several different things that had been written by the Senate and the House. Yeah, so. it was very disappointing. We let people know that it was disappointing. And so it's still evolving. It, it, when you are, start writing the bill, it goes back and forth a whole bunch. And someone had thrown out the 10% of, of, of what the inflation, the four, of like our 4 million, we get like 10%, which is bogus. So everybody complained. And as far as I know, it's still you know, people are negotiating. The only thing that we know for certain is that we won't have any answer about this before the, the vote. No. Okay. Probably no. not before January or February. Yeah. Right. I right. would say we might hear more things by the end of January. The, the new, you know, Maura Healy's got to get into office, truthfully. And so I would hope that when we go to Boston, the third week in January, and she starts reporting out her budget, which would be supplemental to, you know, it, change, it changes Charlie Baker's budget. And that's when we have the opportunity to pick up some information and, and maybe attach our library thing to her supplemental, or it would still go through as a separate bill. I don't know. Well, we need to put some pressure on that in January. Okay. Really? Is there a plan B? <laughs> um, if, let us say, the vote passes and none of that extra money comes in, is there a plan B pursuing alternative monies? Are people starting to look at that? Because I do think, too, that having that as part of the discussion would make people feel better because many people are like this sounds like all pie in the sky uh, you know so anyway is there a plan b you mean for getting ex additional funding yeah not that i've heard of clearly my recollection was at this special town meeting, I think that was asked of Candace and she said no. Yeah, there was no real interest. I, I, I feel like if, you know, we, we should have an alternative plan. I understand the votes next week, so we'll know one way or the other, but there should be a plan B. And the plan B should, I mean, the library needs renovation and the library and, Clearly, uh, people are committed to raising money. So the library is raising money. And 
you know, I think the town still is is in support of at least a million or two um, in renovation. If, if the vote passes, we are on the hook for the whole Megillah. Well, if the vote well, we passes, we won't owe the whole thing, right? I understand, right. but we are we are essentially on the hook for the whole thing, mm -hmm. and so I'm just saying that a lot of people see it that way. And mm -hmm. even if we tap it off a little, so I'm not, since there is no plan B, what I would like to propose is that there be a subcommittee formed for a plan B after the vote, if it passes, although it might also be better to tell the community that we're doing this now so that the intention of every organization involved in this is to not have it fall on the taxpayers and that we're doing our damnedest to do that. Well, you know, um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I just think that's kind of unrealistic. And there is a plan B. If we pass this thing, the plan B is to continue to pursue the legislator, legislature for additional funds. Um, yes, we would be on the hook for this if we move forward. Um, the Finance Committee did their study. They told us that in 2025, when this plan um, starts affecting the tax rate, that the school roof will have disappeared the year before. So some of what we're talking about adding onto the tax rate will disappear. It's 14 cents. I think I just looked it up. So if it's 42 cents or, or 52 cents, in, in a good case scenario, 14 cents of that will disappear. Eight years later, the DPW will disappear. In the meantime, we just approved new pro. So at some point that tax revenue is gonna come ramping in. Sunny Days, which is the cannabis place, which seems to have a real chance of actually getting built, will come <laughs> online. Treehouse is ramping up sales. So our revenue from uh, you know, money, uh, the food and meals tax from Treehouse will start kicking in. So yes, uh, you know, we would be on the hook for it. But the finance committee said, look, this is something that we can afford. So um, unfortunately what's happening in the social media is there's a lot of misinformation. People are saying 12.3 million we're gonna be spending, um, but it's really a case of one group of people who wants one thing is willing to do whatever they can to stop it so that they can perhaps get something that they've gotten no money from the, the government for. So it's it's unfortunate. Right. Now, yeah, Tim, just to add on to that, I mean, it's something to pass on to the fundraiser, whomever, Jim, you know, I monitor Deerfield now all the time. I don't ever post, I may like something, but you know, there's so much negativity and I don't see anybody counteracting that negativity. So the, it, it might be- have been keeping an eye on it. Uh, apparently the advice from their political consultant is not to engage in a lot of Facebook slap fights, you know? Mm -hmm which I have wow. to say, I really have to restrain myself sometimes. Well, it doesn't have to be slap funny. It could be more positive, you know, with accurate information, but at any yeah. rate. Okay. So if there's no other comment on that, I'm just going to move on. And Jim, uh, a report, I know we haven't met, but do you have anything to say about the, um, the campus, the campus uh, building committee? We're, we're meeting Thursday. <laughs> yeah, no, I thought it was Friday. Friday, sorry, yes. Friday. Sorry. Okay. All right. So um, uh, well, uh, there is one personal note. So uh, with the, thanks to um, Mr. Pacharik, I was able to actually finally get a look at the interior of the Congregational Church building. And that is not as large a space as I had imagined, um, which means that um, I don't, th I, I think, it's about, I, I, we have not got a report yet from um, Jennifer Remillard. Apparently the senior center is working on a report about their space requirements, but I think it would be good. It, it could probably serve for that and not much else. You know, um, um, you know I, I don't think we could put the senior center and anything else in that building. In fact, Ms. Remillard isn't sure that the senior center would fit, but I think she has ambitious ideas about office space. Um, uh, but, you know, I, 
I think as a single purpose building, you know, we, 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 you know, we should be thinking about it on that rather than thinking of it as having space for more than one thing in it. Okay. No, that, well, that's, that's interesting. We can continue that conversation on, on Fridays, I suppose. Um, M.A.? Are you, are you referring to the fact that it that the uh, that, that it's not a good meeting space that the actual well it certainly would be a good meeting space and you know I suspect even if it is the senior center the town could well make use of it as a a meeting hall for large select board meetings okay. town meetings etc. I, I don't think there's room to put any other functions in there on a, on a Right. Thank you. Well, yeah, Jim, just, just to add on to that, you know, uh, the intent at this point that we've talked about is um, getting some funding to make it more of a transitional senior center, nothing right. else at this point, and hopefully it's transitional, and at some point when it's determined where a different senior center, maybe permanent or different, then it would transition to some other type of space. Yeah. So, and you know, who knows? I mean, that's, again, that's a moving target at this point. Okay, all right. So I'm going to move on to Anna Lee. Uh, yes, okay, planning board. Um, two things just to note, I mean, as we were talking earlier about marijuana, Ember Gardens has been, not no fault of their own, been slowly creeping through the, Cannabis Control Commission, and I think they're kind of at the tail end of that, and so they're um, potentially starting to um, <clears throat> do some construction. They have agreed to giving the planning board monthly updates, so um, we should be receiving um, an update on that at our next meeting on, I guess, December 5th. Um, otherwise, the veterinary um, hospital across from Freehouse has come to the planning board um, with plans to uh, basically double the size of their parking lot. And a number of us, as we've driven by just on our own lately, I mean, as anybody who has a pad and goes there, you people are in fact parking on the grass and uh, parking is quite inadequate. And so um, right now the their plans are under review for peer review. Um, I believe they also either in the process or have gone through uh, CONSCOM, there are some wetlands considerations, but it's really just at the edge of the, um, the area that's being considered. And it really mainly means, I, as I understand it, protecting the wetlands rather than anything that is really challenging. Um, I will say that one of the things that um, is a bit of a challenge for the planning board, and we need to, I don't know how we can address this, but so many of our green, uh, infrastructure bylaws for um, our site plan review have caveats, you know, to the best of the ability, uh, as possible, uh, you know, as able. And, um, you know, as we saw with NUPRO, there's a question that maybe with VESH, with permeable pavement or with electric car parking that, you know, the vendors coming or the applicants coming back and saying, you know, not not possible, not practical for whatever reasons. So that may or may not be something the planning board really needs to address. I mean, if we're serious about this, then I think we might need to figure out a way to be more serious about it. <laughs> well, that's it. Not only does that really mean that we have to amend our bylaw. Yeah, but I'm not quite sure what that amendment might be. And we're not even discussing that yet, as you well know, at the planning board, but um, certainly we're seeing that on somewhat of a regular basis that, uh, you know, moving over to climate initiatives um, uh, are, some, are, are, at least in the short run, potentially more expensive and challenging and if there's some wiggle room, it appears that that's a wiggle room that is being uh, legally taken within our bylaws. So we, you know, we put those in place because we cared about them. And now maybe, you know, in a while, it might be time for us to reassess. Okay, thanks. Um, Emma? I second that completely as the Energy Committee. 
Um, I was always concerned about all those ifs, buts, and maybes. Um, and they're going to be taken. They're going to be taken by the library. They're going to be taken by the park because financials and by the town for anything they do because when push comes to shove, though that's where the cuts are going to come. And I think, you know, it's lovely we have what we have, but if they're meaningless, so anyhow, I totally second any effort that, to do to get rid of those and say, yeah, you got to do it because if we're going to do it, that's the only way it's going to happen. Could be, yeah. I mean, so to be, well, to be discussed, I guess. Yes. So this is a slightly different topic. Um, any action on accessory dwelling units? Um, yes, we, um, boy, this has been, I will say as an aside, this is one of the reasons why we really need a town planner because um, it has just been slogging through molasses, uh, pumpkin pie molasses of, no, of uh, November um, to, but, but we've had good uh, conversations with representatives from individual committees. Um, right now, we're going to be bringing a draft bylaw um, to the planning board at our December meeting. Um, and then that draft, if depending on how that draft bylaw ends up, if we have any changes or whatnot, will then go to town council. And after town council, then there will be public hearing so we've kind of held off on doing a an all-out re-education to all the committees until we really know what town council may be doing although although it's gone through a lot of layers up till now so i think that if there's any changes i don't think that they should be substantive but um we are here so it'll be in this year's town meeting hopefully uh spring yes that's that's the goal Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Annalie. Anything else, uh, Jim? So I had a question about the, um, you mentioned wanting to change some of the bylaws about energy or green policies. Those would require a, a town meeting vote, right? Yes, but this is so preliminary. I mean, we haven't even discussed it at, this, at the planning board level, but it certainly is a pattern that I and others are seeing and realizing that you know, we don't have a lot of enforcement teeth. Okay. So, okay. Uh, Tim? Yeah, really, the only enforcement uh, or encouragement role that you have is when somebody like Vesh would have to disturb wetlands, then you would say, if you do this, we'll allow that. And the boards have to be willing to do that. Um, but um, as the bylaws are written, uh, you have to be treehouse willingly putting in per permeable pavement um, or it's probably not going to happen. Yeah, we do have a, um, a, a trade grid at the end of our bylaws and maybe that would be the area where we could do some tweaking. Yeah, because VESH is about at the limit of what it can do in that area because the wetlands are expanding there. And so the next time they want to expand, you know, it may not even be possible. Yeah, but for this expansion, it is possible. Yeah. And they're not interested. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. At least at this point, they're not. And they've been, they've been very, very good applicants so far. I mean, they've been very positive applicants. So I don't mean to sound negative. It's a, it's a general comment on our on our bylaws, especially. You had mentioned, Annalie, about getting someone to do an overview of all the bylaws and work through them and as far as applicability and smoothing. So maybe that's an area that you could add to that review. Um, just to throw a comment out on the opposite side of the discussion is, is if the bylaws are too hard over with no wiggle room, then you find people probably not building or not able to meet them and you lose economic um, advancement that you might otherwise have. So I, I like your idea of the, the trade-off grid or something, but. Um, it's a balancing act for sure. As yeah, far as, yeah exactly. as far as the bylaw review is concerned, um, we are, that is something that 
we are anticipating working with FERCOG on, and we're in the process right now of um, uh, developing a scope of work and a contra contract with them. There's a question as to whether or not, or at least I believe what we might be doing primarily from a work management standpoint, as well as a financial standpoint in terms of how much money we have to put forward for this is there's the initial review of the bylaws, which is really just technical format, definitions, inconsistencies. And in the course of that, um, there will no doubt be other substantive issues that come up. And so I think I, I, what we're talking with them right now about is that potentially again for the spring, hopefully for the spring town meeting, we would have that technical review completed. And at least at this point in my mind, that technical review should not be controversial. I mean, putting in a yeah. colon or changing a format shouldn't be a big deal. Um, but it needs to be done before we can start doing some of the other stuff. So, yeah, <laughs> plug in ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, thanks, Annalie. Mm -hmm. Hi, Julie. Uh, let's see. Finance committee has not met. We haven't done anything, so it's been very quiet, which has been helpful. Um, Town Building Advisory Committee, we're moving forward with the architect um, for the 1888 building. Um, we've had a number of meetings, and that's proceeding quite nicely. Um, we have initial arrangements for the spaces inside. Um, the general arrangement is that the first floor um, will be the town clerk, treasurer, accountant area, and the assessor's area. The second floor will be the town administration, um, select board support, and inspections. The third floor, the attic, will be a large meeting room, a staff kitchen area, and a small meeting room. And then the basement will be primarily storage and mechanical and stuff and probably um, space for sort of overflow office area. Um, so we're working through those drawings. We have preliminary drawings. We've been talking to the people in the building and the um, various like select board members and um, everybody trying to get um, this through. Carolyn, I haven't met up with you about it yet. So if you have time over the next couple of days and want to talk through it, um, let's do that. Um, so it, it's moving along. They've been kind of the, our first meetings have been about this arrangements things and sort of general um, stuff. They have looked at the um, envelope. They've had a structural engineer in to look at it. They have their HVAC engineers starting to do it. So the next time we meet, we should have more of that sort of um, mechanical side of things um, presented. We haven't had any um, formal presentation from the architects on that portion of it um, yet. Okay. Tim, question? Uh, Tim? Oh, yeah, I I, I thought I heard us. Uh, I was wondering if um, when we spoke, I thought you mentioned that inspectional services might be considered for the base. Yeah. Has that been ruled out? So it has been. Um, I ran that by them and they have they can't get enough. There's rules about natural light and they can't get enough natural light in to the offices to have an office suite of that size in the basement. Um, so. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure I had that. It, it, yeah, the we did talk about that. So that's fine. And, yeah. Um, are some of the offices going to be moving into the congregational church? I know that we were sort of mentioning. So they don't all have here's, to um, I'll give you my opinion. So and, and now there's the side yet. So what's going in here is what I just said. So inspections, assessors, town clerk, and um, treasurer and all that, and, and uh, administration. So what that leaves is um, in... I, I think the town, here, here's what I think should happen. I think that long-term, the church building should become large meeting space and historic commission. I think there should be, for now, 
the town hall as it is right now should end up being the senior center, the nurse and recreation. Um, so everybody has a spot. Then if we get funding to build a new senior center building someplace, those three, I think it still makes sense to have those three together into the new building, um, wherever that ends up. So no um, community center. So yeah, I mean, well, so, if we build so the library, that would be community center. If the senior, senior center, house. yeah, I, I'm and saying senior center, so senior community center, whatever you want to call it. And no senior housing. Uh, not in any of the current buildings. No, senior housing would be a new building wherever you put it. Because <laughs> that is, I mean, that is not what the campus master group has been talking about, but we, we're we meeting Friday. Okay. So let's, you yeah. Know, yeah. So I was actually thinking about bringing it up when yeah. Jim was yeah. speaking that. I thought, well, I'll just wait till Friday till the campus group discusses. Okay. But, that sounds so. good. So we can continue that conversation Friday. And then if there's anything, report back at our next meeting. Right. Sure. Thanks, Julie. Question because I don't know about the building. Um, does the existing town offices building still have any kind of a kitchen in it, or was that removed when it was changed from a school yeah. into office? Little kitchen. Yeah. yeah, there's a kitchen in there. Yeah, not not a um, not a, the kind of kitchen. It's not like a commercial kitchen. No, exactly. No. There's no yeah. not a sort of thing thing but anything like that. Yeah, you you could you could renovate it to be um. A commercial right kitchen without a lot of hassle. That's where the you know school lunches were before. Right. I have to excuse myself for a moment. My I, my dog is unwell. <laughs> Go get your dog, Jim. All right. Okay. <laughs> move, move on to John. Hi. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Julie covered the 1888 building as always amazingly well. The church, we're waiting for an asbestos plan on that. Julie had drawn up a scope of um, services to put out to bid, whether it was the steeple, we talked about the floor, um, the possibility of engineering the floor to take a load in the future, et cetera, et cetera. So Julie had forwarded that over to Casey and we we're waiting for Casey to put that out last I knew, but Julie may be able to give us a quick update on that when I'm done. Town Hall, the painters were unable to get there this fall. They will be there either May or June before this budget year expires, just to do some minor work on the exterior that's starting to look kind of nasty. And then uh, all of the landscapers clean it up in the spring. The park project still moving forward. St we're still in Franklin County Superior Court, still in DEP review. Um, our DEP assigned person will be going out on maternity leave in the very near future. So the project will be transitioning over to a different member of DEP. DEP's most recent submission back to us, um, if uh, Lily wants to enable screen share, I can actually show you that they want uh, nine different transects um, dug across the park. And they wanna see the wetlands from nine different transects across. You got so, it, John. You got to share. All set? All right. Let's see if I can uh, find what I'm looking for here. Good. And you guys should be able to start seeing it now. So here's the nine transects that they ultimately want us to dig. They want three to five holes dug in these transects across. They want uh, wetland engineers to review the soil down uh, from my limited understanding, anything below 12 inches with, uh, with waterline marks is non-wetlands. Anything within 12 inches of the surface is wetlands. So I'm not a wetland engineer. I know extremely limited amounts about the wetlands, and, and that's really at best. So our engineers were out there. All nine of these were completed this afternoon. We're waiting for them to come back with the information and we'll ultimately see what these nine transects reveal for information across the park. So um, we'll see ultimately that's gonna be submitted back to DEP with all that information and results by next Friday. I think the date would be December 9th. And we'll wait for a response back from DEP to see what the, the next step may be within the appeal process. So that's kind of where we stand. We got the two things pending in Franklin County Superior Court. 
but we also have the parallel pending with uh, the Department of Environmental Protection, basically the wetlands side of it, whether the wetlands on here, um, which we did delineate in August of 2020, and to our understanding that was good until August of 2023, DEP is saying that even though our Conservation Commission legally delineated those and the information went over to DEP with the legal delineation, it was never appealed, that they are operating under a side parallel law on behalf of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers asking for additional wetland delineation marks, which our engineers have never heard of before. So this is kind of new ground for us and uh, we're just working through the process the best we can and uh, we'll see how it shakes out. <laughs> and Tim, Tim, if I missed anything, feel free to jump in. No. Um, okay. could, could the Corps of Engineers be involved because of the proximity of the river? Um, it, it, it's, uh, to my understanding, the the core constantly changes one year it treats certain types of land one way and the next year it changes its mind and so um there is a land i, I don't know the exact title of it but there's land under water something something that which is another layer in this and that's part of the core of engineers so that's that's the mechanism by which they've asked for the transects to, to see, uh, you know, it, it provides information across a, a, a larger area than, than what was asked uh, by the town. So it's a way to, to get around the fact that there is a, a legally approved delineation to look for more information. Great, thanks, Tim. I can't see everybody with, with the screen up. So does anyone else have any questions? No? Okay. Thanks, John. Anything else exciting going on? I have tons exciting police-wise, but that's, <laughs> uh, that's town buildings. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, John, um, I have a question about the church. Sure. Um, do you know whether anyone has gone up and looked at the, um, looked closely at the outside of the steeple to evaluate the condition it's in right now and um, whether there are um, plans to get it sealed up tight and painted in the near future. Uh, Julie can talk quick about the scope in which she worked. I know the repair of the steeple was on there. I'm not sure whether we included the painting of that or not. Or Julie. The still scope on. of work was just for a structural engineer to give us design plan so it um that that wouldn't fall within the structural engineer's purview um that would be a follow-on once we actually start doing some repairs yeah so i think the the first emergency part of this is obviously to get the repairs done and then the second part of it is the aesthetic side of it and the repair of any boards that uh that may need to be replaced so you know it looks nasty i totally agree and i'd love to do it right away but i think project number one is structural integrity and integrity of the floor and let's get a usable building and then project number two is let's get the aesthetics looking gorgeous well it's not about aesthetics if the paint isn't if the building isn't sealed if the wood isn't sealed and there are boards that have already rotted out we're adding to the damage that has already probably been done to the structure so i'm i'm just saying that is that the first step i think should be sealing the envelope to make sure whatever has probably already been damaged doesn't get worse yeah i've been up top i've not seen any water damage on the inside up top i've seen water damage in the basement in the basement i i totally understand that we have to mitigate the water coming in there that is a concern but i've not seen any water damage up in the steeple area i've been up there probably i think three times now okay thanks john Let me answer that question all right, if nobody else has any questions of John, I'm going to move on to Carolyn. Um, yeah, Trevor just uh, has no updates on the sewer. The 
you know, their monthly meeting is gonna happen on uh, Thursday. Um, from the 350th, um, we had a report from the Friends of Deerfield. Uh, they're creeping up to 60,000 in donations. So um, they're, um, we're really pleased that they are doing so well now that we're getting closer to the 2023. And there is enough money for the fireworks and the um, a gala for sure. And so everything is moving ahead very well. And tickets for the gala are um, available right now. So if people want to um, buy some, they can. Um, our, for the MVP program, our soil health um, uh, plan, action plan was, um, believe it or not, one a, a nationwide award. The American Planning Association has awarded Deerfield. Um, Bravo! Resilience, nice. Resilience and Sustainability Award. Can you believe it? Um, for December 9th, there's there's going to be an award. We're going to have a Selectman's presentation uh, December 14th. And I'm really excited uh, about that because it, just like we were the first MVP certified in the state where we have the first soil um, profile in the state as well. So that hopefully uh, we've been working on the task force for the state action plan. So hopefully that is going to be approved before Christmas. And also funding for the Franklin Conservation District to fund our yard by yard um, program um, hopefully will be announced before Christmas as well. Um, that's very exciting. It's part of our remember from the climate forum. As you know, everybody has had mental health issues from COVID and you know, climate change especially is impacting um, kids. So what we're trying to do is focus on people's yards and what they can do in their yards to be more climate change. So between the conservation district, hopefully having Owen Wormser be able to do um, a couple of meetings and some books and consulting and buying plants so people can get stuff done. We'll have a lot of excitement this winter. So that's moving forward. That's great. Thanks, Carolyn. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, it's, it's not a huge amount of money. It's only forty-five thousand, but it's it will have some impact, and I it's hopefully excited. And yeah, I mean, I gotta think when when you, you're when the select board is having these meetings with our representatives and stuff. Come on, we're winning nationwide awards for crying out loud, Maura Healy. You need to know this. <laughs> well, I'm making sure Jim McGovern knows because this is going to be I know Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth yeah. yeah. Warren for our three million bucks, you guys. Our earmark. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah. Okay. Whatever. Right. Thanks, Carolyn. Okay, um, Andrea. No, I'm unmuted. Uh, so, in fact, I have um, I have managed to be away <laughs> uh, for um, a couple of the. Um, the meetings and so I'm hoping that Alan is still hiding behind um, MA there is and that he could say a few words um, about what the open space and rec committee has been doing. Okay. You muted it, Alan. Okay. Uh, yeah, just very quickly, uh, we have uh, just a couple of things. <clears throat> we um, have a draft now that is nearly complete for the open space plan and uh, the open space master plan. And that's been coming together very well with our FERCOG uh, advisor, Allison Gage. Uh, we expect to be able to complete that at the end of this year so that uh, we'll uh, fulfill the uh, sort of terms of the support that we had from FERCOG. And um, uh, we're going to have a public forum on December 13th, and there are some flyers around. We're going to try to get them distributed a little bit. I think they're coming out um, also to email to a lot of the boards and committees in town. So that public forum will be just for people to come and uh, it'll be Zoom, it'll be a question and 
answer and uh, presentation by Allison Gage. So that's that's coming along very well. And I think our action plan, as I said, I think at the, before when I was here is, um, I think there's a lot of really actual uh, doable kinds of things for us to be looking at in the uh, months and years ahead. Um, and then I think uh, I, pretty much everyone probably here tonight is aware of this uh, uh, proposal from George Tulumsis and the uh, Greenfield Open Space uh, Plan to look at this problem that is pretty well known about the access uh, for bikeway uh, through uh, south of part of Greenfield and on into Deerfield. And um, I'm hoping we'll uh, kind of support him, endorse his uh, proposal with them. And I think the kind of money for the feasibility study they're looking at is something that could be entertained if there's um, people I know, uh, Greg is I think going to be working with him some and um, there may be some way that we can do something a little bit more than just an endorsement uh, as we go through our uh, community preservation cycle. But um, I, I think it's a huge challenge and, and uh, everybody knows who goes up and down five and 10 for that section, it's very narrow and it's complex about how we could accomplish something, but it's really worth looking at. And even uh, possibly the ability to do some more connectivity with walking trails that are up in that area of town and connect over on into Greenfield as well. But that's all to be seen, but I think it's a good and worthy thing for us to pay some attention to. Hey, hey Alan, so I, I, I do have a question and I, I completely agree because I do bike that stretch and I don't really like it. <laughs> that's, that's it's the worst not, stretch. It's not comfortable. Okay, so I mean, when we last spoke, it was my understanding that that George has to submit this November 30th by 5 p.m. I is think that, that is correct. Yeah. Okay. I was also under the, the understanding that he wanted a letter from the select board to submit. Is that correct? That, that is correct. And it was my understanding that he was actually going to be, I think he's been in, in touch with Casey about that. No, I, you know, I, I don't know. All I know is that I was expecting him. I thought it was conveyed to him to make sure the select board got the letter prior to the meeting tonight so they could not only endorse it, but vote on that to put their signatures on the letter. Yes, yes. And, and then scan the letter and send it back to him. But it's also my understanding they have not received that. I specifically um, emailed with Casey yesterday about this and, and it said that it was my understanding that that letter was coming to him, I mean, coming to her uh, from George and that uh, hopefully it would be available for, for the meeting tomorrow. Well, I, would, I, I think we've been talking about it by quite a bit. So I would make the motion that the select board endorse this letter once we read it, we could read it, you know, by tomorrow and sign it. Um, Tim, do you have, would you be? Um, no, I'm, I'm fine with that um, as well. We'd have to go into the office in the morning and read it and sign it and yeah. do all that stuff because it needs to be sent by five o'clock tomorrow night. Yeah. yeah. So I'm happy to do that. So. So who is going to uh, tell George that you guys have to have that? I'm happy to um, send him an, an email even tonight to remind him All right. I will uh, that if he has not sent it over, because I know that the wording was there, you know, and that was actually thanks to your little suggestion, uh, Lily, that he helped with some uh, usable wording for sending something over. So uh, I'll, I'll at least uh, get a Email. I don't have his other contact information, but does anyone have his phone there. number? Greg, do you have his phone number? Um, not handy, but I could go look for it if you well, want. Not the planning board in Greenfield. He should. It shouldn't be that tough to find him. I don't. I don't know his last name, but I would give him a call. Yeah, that's, he's on. That's, he's on the planning board. He's well? on the planning board in Greenfield. It was my oh. understanding. Okay. Well, I mean, if, I, yeah. yeah. If Do you Greg, have his number, Alan? the phone number. Don't give it to me. Mm -hmm. Just call him. Um, 
Julie, and, did you have a comment um, before we voted? I just wanted to make sure that if you're voting for this letter, that the letter expresses support for the concept and not necessarily funding. Correct. Right, but yes, without we more discussion. Careful. We were careful about that so far. Yes. Yeah, yeah. there's there, yeah, there was no simply okay, so. endorsing his um application. Okay. We were supporting his application. Right. Yes. And Greenfield's right. application. My yeah. question is who is going to call George tonight? Who's doing it? Is it you, Alan? Is it you? I don't Brad? have his phone number. I think well, if Greg got it, got it, it would be great. He can do that. I will have to check um, and see if I can dig it up off my phone, but I don't have it handy. So I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, I think that's right. Really uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I think he's pretty good on checking his email as well. Okay. So. Well, you know, I think a phone call would be better. I tend to get sort of nervous about this stuff, getting things in on time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Right. You know, I mean, it's a great opportunity. I, I'd hate to miss that. Well, okay. thanks, I, Alan. Um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Tim? Aye. Carolyn, aye. So we, we will work to try to get it out the door tomorrow. Very good. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you. All right, okay. so Alan, you are emailing George, but we yeah. think Greg is going to call him. Is that true? Just that's, that's what I understand. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hopefully, Greg can find his phone number. That would be great. All right. Um, let's see. How about uh, Tim? Um, actually, I'm. I don't have anything really to report. Uh, the only thing I will say relative to the sewer, we're meeting again with um, the nonprofits on December 8th, 7th to continue discussions about the old Deerfield wastewater treatment facility. Um, and that's really all I have. You know, They've made a proposal that they wanna do some more studies. We've uh, provided some new information to them for consideration and um, we'll see what, what happens at December 7th meeting. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Thanks, Tim. Lily? Sure. So senior housing, the sun never sets on senior housing. Um, <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> we, um, we have the final review of our survey results that we're going to be discussing in our meeting tomorrow, uh, Thursday. And we received the draft of the site feasibility study, which we've reviewed extensively. It's like, I don't know, 60 pages or something fun like that, and charts and tables and graphs and everything else is restaurant loved. Um, and um, we had some concerns about the uh, market area that was designated. So we've sort of sent it back to the drawing board, not entirely. We we were looking for some additional towns to be included. And we, for example, thought that we didn't want Hadley included. But interestingly, um, even including say Hadley and Amherst, it shows that there's an incredible need and demand for affordable senior housing here. Um, the other thing senior housing did was we went on a tour of Sanderson Place, which is the senior housing um, that has been built by um, RDI, HRA, which is Franklin County Regional Housing and Regional Housing and Urban Franklin County Regional Housing and something development, RDI, Rural Development Inc. Um, and they have been so incredibly helpful to us at absolutely no charge in um, helping us review the feasibility studies and the survey results. We bounce our questions off of them because they're the professionals who know it gets funded. And so we're they're going to help, they're helping us to ensure that we've got all our T's crossed and our I's dotted. And we went and looked at their facility, which is really pretty impressive. Of course, we found things wrong with it because that's our job. Um, <clears throat> but I have to say on the whole, the, it was filled with light and air 
and space and has an astounding deck and is affordable. <laughs> so <laughs> that was pretty, pretty inspiring. Um, in other news, we signed a contract with Berkshire Design for the site delineation tasks for the campus, the entire campus. And um, senior housing is taking this on. So this includes the library, this 1888 building, the congregational church, and the town hall, the impacts. It's doing the entire campus. And senior housing is paying for site survey and resource area delineation. Um, so they're going to do resource areas within 200 feet of the project area with wetland flags, prepare a wetland report, as well as wetland data sheets for a future permit submission with a CONSCOM. The survey team will prepare a ground-based survey with deed research, property lines, building locations, one-foot topography, edges of pavement, available utility information that we've got to provide somehow. Um, visible rims and inverts, as well as any recorded easements on the property. It will include flagging placed by wetland scientists. Um, it will be an Alta level survey, which is, we have made it very clear. We want this to be irrefutable and correct. We want to do the right thing. <laughs> so it's going to be an Alta level survey. And I looked that up online and that's supposed to be the big one, the good one. Um, if underground utility information is not available, they, we may need to hire another consultant to trace the utilities and considering how long that area has been in use and the various uses, I have worries around that, but um, we shall see. The deliverables are a stamped and signed Alta survey for parcels 8 Conway Street and 71 and 75 North Main Street, as well as the landlocked parcel between 8 Conway and 75 North Main Street. Wetland and stream flagging in the field by wetland scientists. Wetland report by wetland scientists. Wetland data sheets by wetland scientists. And we have specifically instructed them to pay particular attention to the soils because we all know how important soils are. So um, senior housing signed the contract. Uh, I'm sorry, I have COVID brain. Was it last week or the week before? Um, the, week before. the week before. Okay, so the concept is that they are out there and they wanted to do it before the ground froze. And then they will be working on the report um, starting within a couple of weeks. I guess it takes about eight, somewhere between six and eight weeks. And oh, the other thing that we did was we spoke with our phenomenal South Deerfield Water District guy. Uh, Dan? Yes. Oh. He's very oh, my God. So um, the the uh, consultant had said we're going to need to do a fire flow test, which is presumably water pressure up for hydrants and things like that in the event of fire. And um, Carolyn said, oh, I thought we did one. Anyway, so Dan turned around and said, hey, we haven't done one since, I don't know, 2019 or something like that. Pre, You know, since COVID, basically. It's time to do another one. I will get that done for you. And you know what? He did. So that's one thing none of us is going to be paying a consultant for. It is done. That was, a, that was almost $3,000 savings. Yeah. Wow. It was, uh, I mean. Yeah, that's what I was going to charge us to do it. Yeah. So, so That was really nice. Awesome work. Yes. And also, I just want to reiterate, senior housing, we get shit done. <laughs> shit too anyway but no <laughs> it, we were always after the sewer at town meeting that's all i ever just remember for years going please put us before the sewer we never made it <laughs> <laughs> um i think that that's what and we're up to so we're we're uh site feasibility is going on we're working on the drafts the final draft for the market <laughs> survey and then so if you gave us your email and the online version, we're happy to send you that when it comes out. And the uh, demand analysis is, uh, we're, we're working on that. Hopefully it'll be done within a couple of weeks. That's us. Cool. Uh, yeah, I just wanted a quick question. So um, 
Lily, if you do end up working with RDI, what kind of year time frame are we talking about? Six, eight? No, they were held up in um, June. <laughs> they, yeah, I want June, baby. Um, they were held up in Sunderland by something that you you couldn't have teed this up for me better, Tim. I just got to tell you, <laughs> public outreach. They actually had a phenomenal outreach program before they even started. They had a, they went to all the neighbors and they met with all the neighbors and all this kind of stuff. They got all their ducks in a row. And then a new person moved in who hadn't have been a part of those conversations and slowed everything down by two years. Went to court. Went to court. And I think it was because the realtor hadn't disclosed to them, but it, I, I don't know all the ins and outs. Oh my God, does this sound familiar? <laughs> right? Two years in court. Can't imagine. Yeah. And and so um, that's why I would dearly love for our New Year's resolution to begin real conversations in our community with all the things that we're talking about for this campus, because I think it the work that is being done is phenomenal. The and I think that the community is going to love it, but there will clearly be people who won't, and we need to hear it all. And I got to say, even the people who, the people who are cranky often have some good points to make too, even so. So that's, you know, good to hear. <laughs> anyway, so um, that was, I, I do not think that we will have that problem if we um, get to work on including the larger community in the conversation. I, I think truly if people see um, once Sanders, they, they're almost done, they are being held up by some supply chain, uh, something for the electrical system. But um, as soon as they open and people start seeing the units, I think that they will be really impressed. I mean, I have to say it was so bright and light and um, you know, 600 square feet seems like it's small, but honestly, it, the the way it was designed and um, it's it was really nice. I think people will be thrilled to death. That's great. Um, we'll Lee? Lee? Yeah. Uh, yes, I don't know if this would be the um, the campus subcommittee group or what, but you know, we talk about having more community involvement and everything I go to talks about community involvement community you know we have a big hill to climb to get i think you know wide community involvement engagement even just reading and understanding what's going on so um i think that this whole concept of community involvement really is going to be a incredibly important nut to crack and an incredibly hard one to crack well, you just keep trying. Yeah. And you keep so, doing it. You keep getting the message out. I mean, that's the only way you can do it. Andrea? So um, it seems to me that um, it's always good to tell people what you're doing, not, uh, not to be um, asking them for something, but to be telling them. So for example, this award that um, recognition that Deerfield got for MVP, is that in the newspaper? Is that... Uh, well, uh, posted, uh, you know, is there something positive we can, some positive spin we could? We're know, we're gonna yeah. do it. We're gonna do a local thing. It's it's in New, in New Bedford on December 9th. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the American Planning Association's Sustainability and Resiliency Award. So it's gonna get awarded to us, um, and then what we're gonna do is have our consultants, which we hired through the MVP, um, Regenerative Inc. They're the same consultants that are doing the Healthy Soils Action Plan for the state, which I'm hoping because we're the first ones, just like we were the first ones for MVP, this will give us access to money right away and then we won't have a lot of competition because truly, um, as far as I can tell, uh, there's only, Six other towns across the state that are in the process of doing what we have done. So um, we have we're if the plan state plan gets approved and it gets funded, then we have access to money. And of course, 
it's a huge thing for us to because we have such a high water table the whole idea of you know trying to be able to absorb water and filtrate water and all that kind of stuff is hugely important so hopefully that will give us good advantage to access state funding for you right know, except my, my, point, where's my the publicity is the publicity press release so december 14th we're going to have a little regenerative ink is going to come and they're going to talk about our program and we will is very in town, town, but but I want, yeah there should be yeah I, we gotta we'll, get, you know send out a press release so that the uh, chris larrabee can be there and and you know write something it's just that it's years of groundwork before you can really you know what does it mean but hopefully it will mean money i mean the mvp we've gotten a few millions of dollars out of it because we were the first ones in line before it got really it just make sure that towns people know yeah yeah listen sure. yeah. and then you're muted what can i go back to my report though i'm not quite finished <laughs> oh, because i'm i'm supposed to also that's senior housing but um, Alan's here, and he is the chair of the Community Preservation Committee, but um, but I guess I'm speaking for them unless Alan wants to speak. Anyway, I just wanted to say that the- I'm happy to have you speak. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so the, the CPC met about the bike thing, which Alan has already discussed. The, um, we are meeting to review the application um, meeting this week or next week, I guess, um, to get the application as an online submission instead of 10 hard copies to be delivered to the ether somewhere in town hall. So that's what we're doing with the CPC. And I do have a, a, a final report as your elector under the will of Oliver Smith. I would like to tell you all, I don't usually talk to you with wearing this hat, but it occurs to me this, nobody ever knows what this thing does. So why not? Um, the elector under the will of Oliver Smith is only allowed to make its money in mortgages, and not allowed to invest in the stock market. And so um, the new trustees of which I am one, we have decided that we are going to remain always slightly under the mortgage rate. So I'm telling you all, get out there. And then last week, under pressure from years truly, we voted to reduce the requirements to apply from a 30% to 20%. You still have to have an excellent credit rating because I'm really concerned that only the well-to-do people are able to take advantage of this. I will tell you that the interest that you pay on your mortgage goes to grants. And we have doubled the grants to widows doubled the grants to tradespeople, and we doubled the grants to new brides. So <laughs> go out there and get married, everybody. But, but I, I never understood any of this stuff when I was simply an elector. You have to be a trustee to understand what's really going on. And there's so there's a twofer here. It's a, it's a mortgage that is, um, you don't have to go through all the bank paperwork and stuff like that. You need a good credit report and you need to have 20% down, which is more than 10%, but still you, you get to skip all the, the paperwork. And the pen, every interest that you pay goes into grants. So anyway, Get your friends out there. If you know someone, if you know a kid who is in trade school, tell them to apply. They need a, um, a letter of vowing for their good character, okay? If you know an, somebody going to nursing school, if you know a new widow with any young children, John Pachorik, you might be a good resource there. I think they do comb the obituaries, which is kind of grim. But anyway, so if you know anybody, um, and new brides, if somebody you know got married in the town of Deerfield, it's, I think brides might be like $200. But $200 is, you know, one meal these days, but it's a meal. Anyway, so that's my, that's my shtick. Thank you for hearing me out on my 
elected duty. I will return Thank to you, Lily. Really scheduled programming. <laughs> Yeah, we can find more affordable housing. Oh, Julie's people. got a, her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Julie. Sorry, I seem to always have a question. For CPC, it's just, maybe this is just a comment. I've been thinking lately that we're getting to the position where you're going to have competing requests for funding and you're not going to have enough funds to go around. And that's something that you guys are going to figure out. But you're but I think the right. library is going to come. I think the 1888 building is going to come, I think. We're going to be um, to the point where it, it becomes challenging. I, I think Andrea and I are well aware of that. And um, yeah, yeah, but thank you. That that is definitely going to start to face us. Yeah. Early on, we had uh, good sort of resources and um, very few opportunities, but that's rapidly changing. So I think it's actually good because we're finally using the funds for the stuff it's supposed to be used for. So, but. Yeah, everything no. has its new challenges, right? All right. Going to have a comment. I have a comment. Yes. Um, I do not have George's phone number. I've only communicated him uh, with him um, through email, but I'll try and get a hold of him or get his number from Lori Busada, who I'm pretty sure has talked to him um, and has his phone number. Right. But Thank you. I, I don't know um, where to go with that, but. I do want to say something about the um, path um, of the bike lane proposal and um, what has been said in the past that I don't know if all of you are aware of, but when I first began advocating for bike lanes three or four years ago, um, I first spoke with Kevin Scarborough because I figured he would be the one most impacted by it. And what he said to me was, Basically, all you need to do, Greg, is get the select board to tell me where they want me to put the stripes. I've got the paint. And it sounded simple. It has not been simple at all. Um, I've been on the town common um, committee. And the reason I started to advocate for bike lanes was because that was what I was kind of tasked to do by that iteration of the committee. So anyway, after I learned a bunch of things about bike lanes and proposed that the town common committee have bike lanes in these specific places and I made a little map and everything. I was informed that the um, purview of the committee was not to leave the footprint of the town common, which was extremely frustrating because they were the ones that got me on that path mm -hmm. to begin with. I hardly ride bicycles, but I do care about bike lanes. So I continued to pursue it and um, joined the energy committee and the energy committee um, was very much behind it and supportive of it. And we went to a couple of different meetings of the select board. The first one didn't really lead to much, but the second one was hopeful. And at that meeting, I was told that the Berkshire Design Group that was doing the common plans was um, going to be deciding on a, a style of bike lane to be implemented in the stretch, you know, between in the center of town, basically, from the center of town to the school was all I was asking for initially to be striped. And it was a larger proposal that included connecting to other bike lanes in other towns, and it was a much larger proposal. But initially, I thought, stick with Kevin's thing about striping the roads is the easiest thing to do. Let's just go for striping the roads. So um, it got left there, and um, nothing has happened since then. But it seems like it would be a really, really opportune time for the select board to say, um, yes, we will stripe the road in the center of South Deerfield with you know the intention of not only improving the safety for the kids that want to go to school and for people in town that want to use the bike lanes to go through the town, but to um, to have it be in the mix with whatever George is proposing in Greenfield to later connect our mm -hmm. town bike lane to right. larger bike lanes. So Greg, Greg yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't mean to interrupt you. This, this certainly has been a topic of conversation and there, you know, there is grant funding out there that um, we can look into. And it's not just putting just putting striping down. There's it's very formulaic. I did speak with DOT before they did it. Um, 
down Sugarloaf Street because that is a state road. So if you look up, you know, the specifications for bike lanes, there are. So you can't just slap a, you know, oh, no. you know a, a, a lane down there. But, you know, we're running short on time here. We try and, you know, end at eight o'clock. So we will, it's, it's not that the conversation is still alive. I just want to let you know that, Greg. Oh, and I know that. <laughs> we'll, okay, we'll continue working on that. And, you know, there are, there could be a potential grant possibility for that. So, I, you know, I've, I'm looking into that possibly for next round of grants. So, well, and, and again, if you hear of anything, Greg, or anybody else, any kind of grant funding, please let me know because I'm happy to look into it. And just to let you know, Lily has been very instrumental and so has Andrea in, you know, giving tips. Yes, Andrea, thank you, on, on finding some grant money. So, so that would be great. We'd really appreciate that. But if what Kevin said is true, that all he needs is the select board to say where we want the lines, if I, we avoid the problem I, areas and just do the, the section from the parking lot in the center yeah. of the area well, lot to the school, it would be a okay. it would be a, a starting okay. point from which we could okay. use that we, as leverage yeah. in writing a grant. Okay. Because, Greg, yeah, I'm not, I'm sorry, sorry to cut you off, but we can, we can continue the conversation, and it's it's not we'd have to continue that conversation outside of this okay. meeting or with the select board. Okay, okay. At another time, but but thank you. You know, we are going we, to do it, Greg. Don't worry. It's yeah. just okay. All right. So um, I'm going to move on to MA, <laughs> MA, and. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, with and we did. I just you know just want to reiterate. I did send out. M MA had a letter, and I put that in the body of the reminder, the Energy Committee letter, and that's a conversation. I think Julie can also chime in because I think Julie had some comments on that. Did everyone have a chance to read the letter? It's the Energy Committee's recommendation. So MA, go ahead. So uh, the energy, I'm reporting on the energy committee. Um, I, in the, in the prime, we had conversations uh, primarily about, uh, well, Greg and I both attended the meeting with the 188, the 1888 uh, report that you all had, uh, whatever that was. And I was, less than confident about the HVAC. Now there wasn't a lot of stuff on the HVAC, but it just didn't seem like there was, that the, 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 and people were talking about sort of a, a system that was gonna work with geothermal and everybody talking about the same thing. And so I was concerned about that and, that, and as was Greg. And so the energy committee talked about hiring some, a, 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 an energy consultant who really knew about the current uh, efficiencies and climate change and you know all this the sort of new stuff that's going on particularly related to geothermal so we drafted the letter which you saw and it basically says we are recommending that this that that there's somebody who's talking there's one professional consultant who's talking to all of the people who are talking about HVAC systems in the, uh, in, in the campus. And it needs to be, I mean, we mentioned Ben Wheel because he's who we know. There are probably others who are good, but it isn't just somebody who works for an architecture firm who may or may not know uh, the current information that's necessary for what we're looking for for uh, net zero buildings. So we're just throwing that out there and you guys can go with it. Okay. You know, I didn't see who whose hand went up first, but I'm going to go with Tim and then Carolyn and John. It was John. Okay, John, go ahead. John was first. Uh, just by way of quick background from my understanding from just jumping back on a quick old topic as I just sent four emails back and forth. Uh, the funding for the library was supposed to be drafted by Senator Bruce Tarr from Eastern Mass. I have an email into him in the Mass Chief's um, legislative aide, Dave Shapiro, to his chief counsel that would have drafted the bill to figure out when they're planning on addressing it, how much, when it's going to be submitted, attached to what, to see if we can get some traction behind it. 
So Dave Shapiro just confirmed with me that he has touched base with his general counsel. And as soon as he hears back, he will send me a response. Oh, John, that's wonderful. Thank you, John, that's terrific. So as soon as I see that, I'll cycle it out through the group. Excellent. Thanks. Okay. Now, Carol. Um, I just wanted to know if we had any more um, updates on that geothermal grant. I, I haven't heard anything lately. Okay. So that's why my hand's up, Carolyn. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Good. I. Uh, uh, so uh -huh. I actually just was in communication with Allison Gage Furcog, who is the point person on this application for us, and um, asking her, uh, there is a deadline in December where um, the DOE is supposed to either get back to us and ask for more information or, um, you know, just notify us that we've made the second round or haven't made the second round. And so I just asked her, have they asked for any new information? And um, so hopefully she'll get back to me and I'll cycle it out to everyone uh, what her response is in this week. Um, also, I think that in addition to Ben Wheel, we should, if if we do actually um, get a grant for the design phase of this, um, that that person should work with whomever Ben Wheel or whomever else to talk with any architects related to any building in the system, 1888, the library if it passes, um, et cetera, and maybe town hall because their systems are terribly outdated and really take up huge amounts of space. We could uh, build, Get the historic commission a new office if we could just clear out one of those rooms um so i'll let you know great I, I just wanted to add that um you know i have been looking into all this geothermal because in my mind i agree with ma a hundred percent we have to have someone making sure the calculations are incredibly correct because that seems to me of all the webinars i went to everything says the calculations are the key. So um, we got to make sure that we have someone on board that's good. And I have a couple names, this Mike um, Putton and a couple other ones that I've talked to already. So I think at some point in the next month or two, once we find out about the geothermal, we really do need to nail down who is going to be our like uh, representative or someone that's going to help us out to make sure mm -hmm. that whatever the consultants are telling us is correct. Right, okay, uh, Julie, and then MA, and then Lily. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think added to that, there's definite advantages to the town to have the same equipment in all of the buildings so that the people who are doing the maintenance know what to do everywhere. Um, so I, I agree with that. Um, just a one point on the, the comments is that the reason that the information at the architects meeting was somewhat hazy was that they haven't gone through and they it, it wasn't the time to present that information yet so that meeting was not there and the person who is doing the hvac for them is an h it's it's an engineer and a mechanical engineer who does hvac it's not some architect person so um there there is somebody with some skills there and they we have told them that geothermal is a possibility and that the system that they design will have to be interfaced with with geothermal. So we're not, I just want to, like, we're not leaving it out there and letting it be all nebulous and, and incorrect. Um, that's it. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. Back to MA. I, I think I don't really have anything else. I just, I'm concerned that we don't, we want whatever gets put in that it's the it's related to timing and so the library is going to go do something the geothermal is coming in 1888 is coming in and and they're not going to come in at the same time so we may or may not know about geothermal when the other systems are designed but then again we may end up later on doing something with geothermal and it would be a real shame not to have it all work so I don't want to wait to find out about geothermal before we decide on what kind of system we're going to be putting into the other buildings. And, and the other point of that letter was, even if the geothermal doesn't work, we still want systems. In other words, one of the concerns with, was, was a, I think there was talk about uh, using Freon. And Freon is some, 
Right, exactly. <laughs> but no, Freon is banned. There was no talk about Freon. Nobody's using Freon. It was glycol, I think, but that was with the geothermal system. Yeah, that's what you put in the tube in the water. That's right. That. Right, but that's that's very oh. different. But there's, I think, there was the the concern. Nobody, there's no freon. Okay, I think it's there's a modern freon, and that's even about to go out. And so the the question is, when you whatever you're putting in that system, we don't want it to be become extinct you know, a couple of years down the road because it's, it's been put, mm -hmm. it's been put out of business. And, and so uh, mm -hmm. I just, I don't know enough to be able to say this is a good system or a bad system. And um, uh, Steve uh, on, on the energy committee was just talking about it's, it, I think maybe, maybe the library was talking about free on, I don't know, there were Pete, there was something that where he picked up there it's a different kind of freon or something i don't know i won't i won't even go there but freon's bad okay i don't, I don't know really and jim and, J and just a comment i think that you know any system we would ask it to be potentially compatible with a geothermal system and that right. would be one of the requirements so i'll move on to lily and then jim okay so everybody's going to roll their eyes but i think that maybe what we need is an hvac subcommittee that would have like MA and a representative from each of the buildings because that's exactly the kind of reason why we have this organization is to make sure that there that we are being consistent and um, if you are all together and talking and reviewing then um, it's like we have the campus master plan subcommittee that this might be an HVAC subcommittee with specific expertise but also knowledge of the buildings. Okay, um, Jim. So the library architect I think is fully cognizant cognizant of a lot of this. I know for example he's going for lead certification and I assume that that means you know no no lead certification is not yeah. And, and he is aware. I, I remember that. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is something that you know continue to be discussed. And Tim just to stuck, you know, whether an HVAC committee, but you know, with certain, I mean, we can sit here and talk about this for the rest of the night. None of us are experts, are probably futile at this point. Um, but I think you know you really need to get an expert. So um, Tim. Yeah, I was just going to say. I mean, if if the if the voters approve the library project, um, the architects for both the library and the 1888 building will be working roughly in the same time frame, and and it would be good to just keep them. Dan Pilata is going to be the OPM for both of those projects. We mm -hmm. make Dan aware. Dan makes them aware. They're the first. They lead this, and and if we get the uh, geothermal grant. Those people will be in the design phase at the same time as the architects for those buildings. So it's actually sort of convenient. And now that my dog has shut up, um, <laughs> I believe that I, from what I remember discussing with the, the architect for the library was that there was not any major issue with you know making the library's HVAC system compatible with geothermal. I mean, as I'm sure Julie could tell us, it's mostly a matter of you know what you connect your Heat exchanger. Yeah, exactly. No. <clears throat> right. Yeah, they're an all electric system. They're not using fossil fuels. And the same deal for 1888 building because the Energy Committee has done a really good job of letting everybody know that fossil fuels is not something that we want to pursue. Um, so both buildings are doing the, the electrical systems, and all of those electrical systems are compatible with both air source and ground source heat pumps. So depending on whether you go geothermal or not, they should they should both be able to be hooked up to um, the system. So it's not. Well, that's great. Okay. And, and I, I am certainly not an expert. I am just reporting from conversations in the energy right. committee. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's a good conversation, Emma. So thanks for bringing that up. And I think it's great, you know, just to have so everyone's on the same page with this. So thank you. Okay, I'm just going to move on. I've got a few things to report, and then we've got to set the next meeting. Um, so as far as the efficiency and regionalization grant, 
we were going for $200,000 and we had a conversation with Sean Cronin, who's, I guess he's sort of the first, the first level that this goes through. And we met with Casey Ellis, the grant writer, and I met with him. He said, unfortunately, I mean, we really pushed hard. He said, because the whole point of this is to do a regionalization, okay? And so since we are already regionalized with the senior center, he said that would be a hard sell. He just, he could not support that, but he can support um, feasibility studies. So we, instead of going for 200,000, we'll probably at best get about 75,000 if we get the money. But hey, once again, it's better than nothing. And, and you know, sorry, Denise, is, which feasibility study is this? This is for the efficiency and regionalization grant. Okay. So I'll continue to report on that. I don't know when they're making that final decision and we could potentially after that go for another grant. You know, he said, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, the, the, the other grant, the T-Mobile hometown grant, um, we're having another meeting with Casey and Alice on Friday to sort of shore things up and hopefully that will be for the church and as long as we shore that up, I think that needs to be submitted by December 31st. And I think along with that, we will need five letters of support. So we will be coming back to different committees for letters of support, the select board, maybe the finance committee. I mean, I don't know who else. So we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out and then we'll get back to everybody to see, you know, to see if, um, if we can get letters of support for that. And let's see the last thing. Since we didn't get the community one stop, we are having a debrief on that on December 2nd to say, why didn't we get the money? <laughs> and when can, we, when can we submit another proposal? And can we submit the same proposal? Can it be modified? You know, why didn't we get that? Why weren't we, why weren't we in the running for that money? So, which was disappointing, but we'll keep going. So. All the work you do. Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks for all the work everybody does. It's it's definitely a group effort, that's for sure. But you know, once again, reminding people if anyone has any, you know, if you hear of any grants or any possibilities, just send them through, and I'm I'm happy to you know do some research to see if we can, you know, if that's feasible to do that. So let's see. Um, is there any other business that we have not discussed that needs to be discussed? And if not, let's set the next meeting. Let's see. What sounds good? I know, know everyone loves meetings. So definitely makes sense after the library vote. And we're getting into- You're thinking about December? Holidays, yeah, I mean, We could put, I don't know, I mean, is, is the week of December, this, let's see, it's the second, third week in December? Wait, where, oh my God, this week is the first week in December. December 13th, 14th, no, we can't do 15th. Uh, December 14th. Select board meeting. Select board meeting. December 13th, which is a Tuesday. That's the open space. Open space uh, public hearing. 15th is not going to work. There's nothing happening. Well, no one wants to meet on a Friday, I'm sure. What about Monday the 12th? Can people do Monday, Monday the 12th? That works. Um, the 350th meets at 630, um, but that's okay. I could just. I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a real long meeting. Um, you know, we had a pretty extensive meeting tonight, but um, you know, it would be helpful to have one shortly after the vote on the library to sort of regroup. I agree. I agree. Okay, so is that good for everyone? So December twelfth. What time? Uh, six six thirty, same time. Is is that good? Um, not great for me, but it seems no. like it's best for everyone else, so I can make it work. Okay, thanks, Jim. Can we, can we do earlier? 
we could do it earlier, but Jim, is that is that good for you? Because earlier would be a great help. Yes. Earlier, okay. Because if not, I mean, when people have requests, you can report first on on something. I know you want to be in the full meeting, but we can do six o'clock if that works for people. Six o'clock would be great because is that I good can, for everybody? Then I can go to the yes. No. Okay. Okay. No, six I can always bail out on you. <clears throat> See how nice we are, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> and what'd you do to your dog, by the way? Don't ask. No, my wife came home. That's basically what happened. Good to know. <laughs> no dogs were harmed in this meeting. No, the, something is wrong with the dog's innards, and so I was being oh. very, you know, oh uh, yeah, your word for it. <laughs> Got it. Cautious. Yes, it sounds good. All right. So it's twelve at six o'clock. Yes, and I will send that out tomorrow, and I will send out a reminder. Okay. okay. Thank you. In time. All right. Um, do I hear a motion? The select board close first. Motion to close the select board meeting. Second. All okay. those in favor? Tim. Tim Hilchey, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. And do I hear a motion to close? I move that we adjourn the Connecting Community Initiative meeting at 8 15. Carolyn, second. second. Everybody? <laughs> okay. Thank you all. I will see you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night, all.